Greetings. As a follow-on to the introduction of the Tesla semi-truck, mule, and spy shot, our focus of talk today is on something that's called the noise form factor of the new Tesla semi-truck. I'm going to follow this on with a little bit of a discussion also of the pollution impact of this vehicle. Stay tuned. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Bonjour and vigates, guten Tag. Today's talk focuses on the fact that when the new semi-truck was introduced, at least in the mule fa form factor, yeah, as well as the spy shots being introduced in, in anticipation of the number, November introduction, once the truck was shown in operation, I was impressed to see it operate. Obviously, it was nice to see something moving rather than something you'd heard about that had been in operation, number one. Number two, what I was really uh, surprised by is that having never seen a truck that big operating as electric, I was kind of taken aback because there were certain expectations I had in terms of noise level that the truck would generate. So I did a little bit of research and, and read about this. And what I came up with was perhaps three points that might be of interest. The first move I did, and you'll see from the materials I've presented uh, prior to the, the start of this video, and it really just focuses on the fact that there are a number of uh, life I want to say disimprovement issues that pop up related to the noise that's created by a semi truck or by by just your surroundings. It turns out that everything from hypertension to high blood pressure to cardiovascular disease, all of these things could come into play. So I was kind of intrigued and one of the reasons I decided to make this video is that there's a one of the discussion items that many of the European uh, countries and major cities have been discussing is the fact that their goal is to get rid of the internal combustion engine by 2025 as a form factor in terms of delivering goods. Still all around the world, 70% of the freight is still being delivered by Class A trucks uh, that are not only heavy pollutants, but they're all, they also make a lot of noise. So my initial reaction was, you know, come on guys, this is ridiculous. What's a little bit of noise and how much impact can this really have and is that a big deal? And I have to admit that part of my bias towards it not being a big deal is most of the places I've lived in the United States have been somewhat suburbs or rural settings. And to be honest with you, I prefer the rural settings part of the reason is that it's quiet and it's easy to sleep. The European focus on this issue and sort of large cities in the United States focused on this issue is driven by the fact that in a high density setting you have uh, many of these buildings or settings where the retailers or grocery stores are on the first floor and then there's housing above. And in that setting there are many delivery and garbage trucks that move in and out of those areas that create a lot of noise pollution. And there are many people whose lives are impacted by this in a negative fashion and therefore are inclined to want to see a change in how this process is done. So hence um, the European cities, et cetera, have all made it a big priority to get after this issue of not only air pollution, but noise pollution and when you consider the fact that this can even involve a number of deaths 
uh, this is actually a pretty important issue that needs to be focused on. So I have attached the video of the truck in action once again. What you'll notice is that prior to taking off, the driver uh, releases the air brakes. And when you hear that brake, that's about 100 decibels of noise that you're hearing when that uh, brake is, is engaged. The second part of that is when the truck takes off, you will hear noise from the engine. However, this noise, I believe, is sub 50 decibels, which is almost uh, speaking level between two people in a room. So one can see how having this reduced amount of noise could actually add years of life to many many people's lives and I, I think that's a pretty awesome benefit. Um, I have to admit that typically I'm used to covering a number of issues uh, in our videos that are sub substantive and have long-term impact. The other one I wanted to cover here is that it's well known the, the performance numbers uh, for the electric battery pack. Um, again, the, the gas mileage experienced by the Class 8 diesel trucks is somewhere in the range of six miles <laughs> per gallon. So when an ICE engine burns, 30% of the energy is used for transportation and the remainder is sort of blown through the tailpipe uh, in the form of pollution, noise, etc. In the case of as you'll see, again, the semi, you'll notice that obviously there's no pollution because electricity is 90% efficient. So therefore, you're getting all of that performance and velocity without uh, noise pollution or air pollution to go with it or, or very insignificant amounts. So this is a huge deal because when we're delivering 70% of our goods by these trucks, uh, that air pollution is why Elon Musk decided that he wanted to go ahead and develop and introduce the truck sooner than later because the impact of that air pollution is far greater. As we've reviewed numerous times in the past, uh, if you look at you know, the, the raw difference in fuel performance base, is obviously going to be based on the, the cost of the electricity. Um, Norway, for example, is one of the largest buyers of Tesla and I'm actually fascinated by those guys because it, once they go to using trucks and if they make it a state priority, they're able to generate by renewables like uh, um, solar panels as well as um, hydro uh, their electricity, and in theory, you could end up with a cost of fuel being uh, f fairly close to zero if the state made it a priority to hand out electricity to these trucks to operate. And if that were the case, you would have zero pollution in Norway or, or very little generated by these uh, trucks in operation, both noise and pollutants uh, in the air. I'm uh, you know, I, I'm starting to really understand sort of the mandate that Tesla, Elon Musk, et cetera, are working under because uh, if you have places that are no longer heavily noise polluted or air polluted, I think it enhances the quality of life for everyone involved. So I'm actually looking forward to this getting off the drawing board and getting into action. As you all know, I've been had heavy coverage of what's called the e-canter. So Mercedes-Benz has taken a Tesla battery pack or three and put it in a light duty truck. And once these trucks are available at scale, they'll now start banning delivery vehicles being uh, uh, diesel uh, or other ICE uh, methods. And uh, this will enable all of us to get a better night's sleep from a pollution standpoint, 
as well as from a noise uh, air pollution and a noise pollution standpoint. Um, I appreciate uh, all of you taking time out to subscribe and like if possible. Look forward to your comments on this topic. I believe, uh, I kind of feel like based on how intense the European pressure is to move over to electricity, um, it's very clear that that it's more of a priority <coughs> this transition into the future. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Please like and subscribe. Tschüss, mach's gut. Au revoir, lehit rot, hoda hafez. And please share any questions or topics that you'd like to hear more <laughs> on going forward.